Hey guys, welcome back to No Catch Your Name. It's me, Ella, and this is episode number 85. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, I got a lot of finished objects to show you guys and a lot of whips. <laughs> They're the same whip, but there's a lot of them. <laughs> and yeah, I, don't, I have a couple acquisitions to share with you guys and all that jazz. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop into it. And I'm in my living room. <laughs> I decided to just film in here, in here because most of my stuff was already in here anyways. But um, I was sitting up there working on some whips. And I decided to go ahead and come down here and film. So I'm in the floor because I'm on Jesse's little table. Well, I'm not. The camera is. Um, for height. So, yeah. My laptop's right here. So all my stuff's over here. And actually, one of my whips I'll be showing you, I can't find the original pattern. I have it saved in my computer from years ago. And I can't find who, where I got it from. I don't even know. I have to try to look it up some more and try to find it. And then I will share it. If I can find it after I edit this video, I will put it in the description below who wrote it. But um, I'm hoping I can find it. But anyways, finished objects. <laughs> I got, um, I've been working hardcore on my craft fair projects. Um, I'm only taking amigurumis to it. Uh, that's what I signed up as. When you sign up to it, you have to like tell them what you're bringing. And I just said that I was bringing crochet uh, toys and dolls. So I've been working on that hardcore. And actually in, in doing that, I've had to stop working on county fair projects, which is hurting my soul because I love entering stuff into our local county fair. And I, I will still be able to enter uh, like under 10 things this year that I've finished. Uh, actually, some of the stuff I'm going to show you today is I'm going to enter into the county fair and then I'm going to try to sell it at my... Um, craft fair because the county fair is first and the craft fair is in October but um let's see August September yeah <laughs> let's make sure I was right because our um county fair is in September the first week of September and my craft fair is not until the 12th of October anyway so I've been working on stuff for the craft fair uh hardcore and probably will be the rest up until it happens <laughs> because I want to have a lot of cute little little amigurumis and some bigger ones and you know just a variety to, to take and um, I just now noticed that, that them, them are under there and uh, that one is super bright it's the little balls that Jesse likes playing with but anyways with that being said I have some cute amigurumis to show you okay first if you're a member of the Facebook group you would have seen this one already and it's so cute but it's called the amigurumi sheep by a name I can't say because it's in Turkish <laughs> It's like leith, leithy groomy. Um, but the pattern is written in Turkish. And then it is translated into English. But it's translated really weird and poorly. I don't know who translated it. But um, if it feels like when I was reading the pattern. And then when I was making it. It was like parts of it were just completely missing. And if I would followed the pattern exactly. Um, the body would have come out tiny compared to the head. The head is huge anyways. So I did have to do my own thing for the body and for the legs and ears and all that uh, and the tail. It just seemed like parts of the pattern didn't get translated and weren't even there at all. But anyways, ta-da! It's an adorable little sheep. <laughs> and it's made with uh, Red Heart Super Saver. I think this is Buff. And this is Pipsqueak. Uh, Bernat Pipsqueak in white. <laughs> this the, the Bernat was actually gifted to me who gifted it to me? It was one of the Llama Mama uh, Kayla swaps, I believe. I think I got it from one of those. I either got it from one of those or a carousel package, but I think it was in a Llama Mama swap. I think so. But um, I had one ball of it, so I made this cute little sheep. And I ain't gonna lie, crocheting with this was kind of hard. But because it's fuzzy, you can hide your mistakes very easily. And I'm sure there's a ton of mistakes in here. But because it's fuzzy, you know, no one's ever gonna know. But yeah, I think this is just so cute. <laughs> so I made this one. This was the first one I made. And then the second one, I had to wing the body again. And this time I made it bigger. So the second one is larger than the first one. So it's like a big brother and a little brother or something. But I made it also in white. And now both of these are made with the same ball of pipsqueak. And then I have this much left. So I think I'm actually going to just make a ball out of this. And stuff it for like Jesse to have like a snowball. But um, yeah. I wanted to make another white one with black um, everything else to look like you know the sheep that's black with white uh, wool. Uh, but I won't. I don't have any more pipsqueak. So, but I do have some stuff that I got at Hobby Lobby. I think it's called Cloud Nine or something like that, and uh, it's thinner, so I could probably just hold two strands of it together. 
and um, work it up. But I also wanted to make one that's got, you know, this color uh, features <laughs> and then black fur because I got um, black Cloud9 also. I also got orange. I guess I can make an orange sheep. <laughs> but I think these are so cute. Um, I'm not going to be super disappointed if they don't sell because I would love to keep them. <laughs> but uh, I hope they sell because obviously, you know, I make stuff I want to try to sell it. But they're adorable. I will go ahead and link the pattern below, but um, just warning, it's not written out perfectly. You'll have to uh, mess around with it to get it to come out. But even his legs and everything, they're just he's just larger. I just made him different. <laughs> but they're cute. They have a mouth you're supposed to stitch on there, but a lot of times I just like leaving the mouths off. I don't know. It just looks cute with just the eyes, I think. So those are my two little sheep. And I'm, there will be more sheep, <laughs> I'm sure. And then what's next? Okay, this is also for the craft fair. Uh, pretty much any amigurumi that I make between now and October is going to be for my craft fair. Uh, and it is the Giraffe by I Love Buttons. Ta-da! It's so cute. It also doesn't have a mouth. I just put eyes on it. I accidentally messed these up and didn't realize it until after I done made them. And I didn't want to rip them out, so I just left them. This part's supposed to be a little bit more narrow. I didn't, I missed a decrease. But I didn't want to like, fix it, so I think it's fine. But this is made with uh, Red Heart Super Saver White, and the body is um, a Hobby Lobby yarn that I can't remember. It's a yarn bee, I think, um, that I got recently in the markdowns. And his eyes are just French knots because I was going to put safety eyes and I forgot. So I just went ahead and did French knots <laughs> to um, give him eyes. But I think he's pretty cute. He turned, he turned around. He's made to where he'll sit. You know, his legs are floppy <laughs> so that he can sit or, you know, his legs will hang, whatever. But yeah, this, I can't remember what this yarn is. I should have brought some more in here. I have a bunch of it, but I forgot. But oh well. It's just a, uh, it was on the clearance yarn at Hobby Lobby recently. I think it was like only 99 cents or something like that. I think it's so pretty though. Okay, I thought it was cool how both ears turned out to be blue. Because I just let the yarn do what it was doing. I didn't um, control it, color control it, whatever people call it. <laughs> this was super easy. I made this really fast and like, you know, I made this completely in one day. I think I actually crocheted it all in one day and actually sewed it together the day after that. But it's a free pattern and it's cute. I love it. And then this is actually, I showed this last video. I finished the crocheting part mostly last time, but I did go ahead and make the eyes. <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys the eyes. Um... I can't remember what this is called and it's not on my uh, thing anymore. I'll try to link it below if I can remember, but it was also in my last video, um, 84. But it's just a little octopus and um, I didn't do safety eyes on him because I didn't have big enough safety eyes. So I just went ahead and crocheted, um, I think I did like 6 or 12 double crochets maybe. And then I just stitched on the little white parts to look like the glimmer or whatever. <laughs> I think it's cute. That's also for the craft fair. And then let's see here. I got another one laying around here somewhere. There it is. And this is cute. This is the one thing that I'm working on a ton of these. And it is called The Little Oyster Amigurumi by Hooked by Katie. And here it is. But it's an oyster. <laughs> I think that's so cute. It's an oyster in a clam shell or whatever. Oyster shell. Whatever they're called. And I guess it's more like a clam. I don't know. I don't know much about um, those because... I don't eat anything like that. That just sounds gross to me. But anyways, I think it's cute. <laughs> and I've got, I don't even know how many more of these started. I've been working on shells ever since last night. I made this one last night while watching Forensic Files. <laughs> and then I went ahead and, because um, I had the shell pattern memorized because it's super easy. And um, I started making shells. And I made some this morning while I was sitting here waiting. And... Um, I made a ton of shells and I wanted to make some variegated and some solid colors and then I'm going to go back and make the clams or whatever and uh, put the big eyeballs on there because I think it's cute with the big eyeballs. But super simple pattern. It's three pieces. You make the two clam shells and they're the exact same pattern just repeated and then this is basically a ball and they're a little ball and then you just sew them all together and it's just a cute little clam. I thought this would be so cute and this is something because it's I could use scrap yarn and it's relatively cheap. Even the safety eyes that I used were gifted to me. So I don't have to worry about making a huge profit off of those. Um, I could sell these. I was thinking like $3 each or 2 for 5 And I thought, you know, a kid might want it. I don't know. We shall see. <laughs> I will probably, when it gets closer to my craft fair, 
I will um, do videos about um, how I price things and obviously it's not going to be the same everywhere because it all depends on where you live and what the kind, what kind of people live there and what they like to spend on handmade things. And I live in the middle of nowhere and people aren't willing to spend a ton of money on handcrafted things when they can run to Walmart and buy something super similar <laughs> and that's just how people are around here. But every now and then you find that one person who will pay whatever you want just because they do appreciate handmade but most people don't know anymore. But um, so I gotta keep my prices low around here. So that's also why I always buy clearance yarns and try to get deals and stuff because uh, the less I have to spend out of pocket, the more profit. But anyways, I think this is so cute. And there's gonna y'all are gonna see a ton of these probably next week because I'm working on them still and I might make more. <laughs> I don't know. But they're super cute and easy and yeah, I think just I think they're so cute. Alright, so now I have a pile of amigurumi. I did finish two things that weren't amigurumi. <laughs> Just because um, this I actually made these two before I finished started working on any of those but the one sheep. I did finish the one sheep um, the last week, I think. And then the rest of those I made this week uh, after finishing these. And these are just two of the squares from the Unraveled Mitten um, Crochet Long Scrap thing. <laughs> I got really behind on everything. Um, but it's just because, you know, life. So let's see here. I don't know what number of squares these are, I done forgot, but uh, I'm trying to finish them in row. So the first one that I did finish is called the crossed cable square. I'll make sure, I don't think it matters which way you hold it. So I made it with spring green. I like this one enough, I mean it was okay. The pattern was easy. Um, it's pretty. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want to make like a big blanket out of this stitch or anything, but it's pretty I think. And this one, I didn't weave the end in on this one, but that's okay. This one's called the Alpine Stitch Square. And this one, I think I did it wrong. <laughs> um, but you see all the holes? I, uh, I couldn't understand the pattern because she wrote it, you do like 30-something chains and then single crochet or whatever. And then when you work back through, you make the front post um, double, triple crochets. And the way she wrote it is like you do those and then you still do a double crochet behind it. But if I did that, I would end up with 60-something stitches. So I skipped the double crochet behind the treble crochet. So that I would still have the 30-something stitches instead of 60-something stitches. And mine's really holy. So I don't know if you're supposed to do that or what. But it's, I think it still looks good. It looks better when the sun's not glaring on it. But this is the best lighting I have. This is um, Red Heart Super Saver. I think it's just called Blue or something like that. You can't even see it. It's like textured because these are all front post triple crochets and they're drop down. They're like drop down front post. <laughs> it's, it's hard to explain. Whatever. Um, I'm not that good at showing it. But yeah. So I'm getting caught up on that. I think I have two more to catch up on and then another one comes out next week. I know there's a corner to corner one. It's the corner to corner. Blah, blah, blah. Corner to corner double crochet. It's not like the, you know, you do three and then turn it and all that. It's like just actually corner to corner double crochet. And then there's another one I think. Let me go look real quick. I can't remember but I do need to weave in the ends to that. So I'm almost caught up on that crochet along. I'm still pretty behind on Jada and Stitches. Um, 2019 blanket. Let's see here. Star Stitch. So yeah I need to do two more squares to catch up on the Unarmable Mitten. It's the Star Stitch. Um, one which actually had my yarn pulled out for that and I, I never did start it I just remembered that um and then the double the corner to corner double crochet square and then I'll be caught up until next week on that one and then for the jade and stitches I still have to make the roll of houses and she put out clouds so I want to make some clouds to put on mine I think that's all that I'm behind on that because I made the barn and um I haven't made any of the little um pine trees, little Christmas looking trees, but I probably will. Um, cause I've seen some people doing all kinds of awesome things with their houses. You know, some people just stick to the regular pattern. It's just all the houses with some decorations and some people like go out of their way to decorate it and look really cool. And I've seen someone added a little bicycle up against one of their houses and some person, some people left out some of the houses and put trees and stuff in between there. And I think that's really cool. So, um, me, because I'm so busy with everything, I'll probably just do the basic pattern and just copy everything Jada does. Um, 
and in retrospect, I probably shouldn't have even started that blanket. But back when I started that earlier this year, I wasn't expecting to do a craft fair. Um, I didn't sign up for that until a few months after the Jada thing. But, um, yeah. It's just hard. You know, this is my first craft fair that I've done 100%. And, um, so I'm, I'm not exactly prepared for it, I don't think. So I'm trying to go ham to have a bunch of emigrimi for it. And then, um, there's already a craft fair the Earth Day one, I've talked about that in the last few years because uh, we always go to it and I did participate in that last year, but I didn't have my own booth. Uh, someone I know had a booth and she just took some of my items for me, but um, I thought I might sign up for that next year because they're starting sign-ups August 1st, which is like next week, and um, I thought I might sign up for that because then I would have months and months to prepare, prepare for it because it's not until Earth Day weekend, so that's, you know, next spring. Um, when is Earth Day? I can't remember now. We go to that every year. But it's, it's you know, months away. But, uh, and then if I have anything left over from the current, the new, the craft I'm doing <laughs> later this year, I could just roll it over to that. Um, I don't know how good the October craft fair is going to go because it's kind of a small fair, but it is their sixth one. So they, they do good enough to continue doing it. <laughs> so that's, that's motivating, I guess. But, um, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I won't know until I'm there. I did find out um, that my booth area is indoors. So that's cool that it won't be outside. Although it'll be October, so it will be. It wouldn't be horrible to be outside. But I messaged them because I needed to know if I needed to bring a um, canopy thing, and they said that I can have an outside booth if I wanted one, but that they got me in an inside booth. So I was like, inside is good, <laughs> unless it's a not air conditioned building, and then it would probably be hotter inside than outside. But uh, I'm planning on taking a cooler with waters and some snacks and stuff like that. And I'm also taking my sister <laughs> so that she can help me. You know, if I have to go to the restroom, she can deal with people until I get back and all that jazz. But, yes, that was a tangent. <laughs> whips. I have two active whips. I have other whips that you guys know about um, setting in there. Because, like I said, I've dropped everything to try to get ready for my craft fair. Because it's, it's October 12th, so that gives me all of August and all of September to work on stuff. But, um, sometimes I don't feel like crocheting, you know, sometimes I get either down or I'm not feeling well or something, or we're busy doing stuff and I don't have tons of time to dedicate to crocheting. So I'm trying to crochet like crazy on the days that I feel like it and that I have all the free time in the world to do it so that, um, on weekends and stuff, when Devin's not working, we can go out and enjoy life because I don't want to wait until the end of September and then be like, ah, I need to make all the things. So... Let me dig out these whips. I got a lot of yarn. This, these whips <laughs> are living in a market bag that I made. This is a Karen cake. I think it's called Rainbow Sprinkles or something like that. It was gifted to me by Hannah at the Cozy Cottage Crochet. Um, the pattern, I can't exactly remember. It's called um, the shell something. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. I made it last summer. Oh, that's all tangled up. But I use this a lot of times to carry packages that you guys order <laughs> from my Etsy shop to the post office. I'll, I'll package them all up and stuff them in here. I want to use them at the farmer's market, but, um, our farmer's market just now started, oh, you know, being big because, you know, you have to wait for the crops to come in. And, um, I haven't got a chance to go yet. Okay. This has got a ton of ends. <laughs> oh my gosh. These are the oysters. I'm trying to get them all out. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I made seven sets of shells so far. So I will show you. Okay. These three colors I'm going to show first are scrap balls left from some yarn that I won from Holly at the Proper, proper Pineapple. Back when she was, I think it was Christmas time, and she was doing um, like the 25 days of Christmas or something like that. She was having a, like a month-long giveaway for Christmas, and I won one of the days. And this is some yarn in there. I can't remember now what it was because it's been since December, and these... Have been without their ball bands since about that time but i made green set of shells <laughs> so you sew them together wrong sides facing and you sew together the parts that aren't curly and then you sew the little oyster in there <laughs> and um so i made a green set a yellow set an orange set which i just finished this right before i started filming <laughs> i was working on these orange ones and then Let's see here. This is Red Heart Super Saver Blue. A scrap ball that I have. Blue set. 
and I haven't weaved in any of the ends because actually the ends from starting are the ones I use to sew the little oyster in place. And then this is a scrap of this. I know this is an I love this yarn, but I can't remember what it's called because I've had it forever. But I know it's an I love this yarn color. It's smaller because I love the yarn is thinner. It's a worsted weight, but it's thinner, so it's gonna be like a little oyster. <laughs> And then these, t the last two are uh, Red Heart Super Saver variegated yarns. I'm not sure of the names either. I think this one's just like browns or something like that. So I made a brown one. <laughs> and then blue. So all these are going to be oysters. And um, my first oyster, the color in it is this Red Heart uh, pink. I'm not sure what color this is because it was gifted to me, I think by Becky. Um, it was in some yarn that she sent me and it didn't have a ball band, but it feels like Red Heart. And I made the first oyster out of that and then some of them I'm going to make the oyster brown. Because I think it would go good, better with like this blue and the other brown and all that. And then, uh, I have this, which is a Red Heart Monet, maybe? I think, no, it's, yeah, I think this is Monet and the other one that I was talking about the other day is Water Lily or something like that. Um. This I thought about making some shells out of or an oyster because uh, they kind of remind me of like pearls. So um, I thought I'd make it look kind of like a pearl or something. I don't know. I'm just randomly doing it. But I do want to get some more solid color shells made. Like maybe some like browns or something. <laughs> I don't know. And just make up a bunch of little oysters. How many did I say this was? Seven? Eight. So I have eight of them technically going right now. And um... All the safety eyes are also from Becky. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she gave me this too. She gave me a lot of stuff. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> but uh, I'm not even sure what size these are. It doesn't say. But um, they're big and I think they're cute with big eyes. You know, they just look cute with big old eyes. Every time I talk about oysters, I always think of um, Alice in the Wonderland. The old cartoon of it where, um, I don't even know what it is. Like a walrus is eating oysters and he goes and gets all the baby ones. And he tricks them and brings them back to his house and he eats them. And it's sad, but it's funny. All right, my last whip. This is the one that I can't remember who made it because I've had it printed off forever. And it doesn't have anything on here. I looked. There's no copyright or anything like that. It's just the pattern. But I'm going to search it because I got this picture. And this picture is from 2007. So it may be a really old pattern, you know. Uh, I'm going to try to. I don't know. I'm covering up. It's a free pattern. Because I did find my notes about it that I found it somewhere. I don't know. We'll look for it and I'll find it. But just in case it's not free. But I'm pretty sure it's free because I didn't used to buy patterns. I used to only use free ones. But uh, I actually made one look just like this in 2015. And we used it the la all the years we've lived here. But our tree is so fat and wide at the bottom that it's too small. <laughs> and I could go back and add on to that tree skirt. But I don't have any more of the Red Heart Mistletoe or whatever it's called. And I'm on a yarn band big time. And I'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> But um, I have plenty of white, green, and um, red hot red. What's it called? Cherry red, hot red, whatever. Uh, but I don't have any of that mistletoe to go back and make it bigger. So I decided to make just a whole new one. And uh, I started it the other day. Because, like I said, our um, tree is too fat for that one. I'm using my hook my sister got me. It's got a candy cane on it. And it's a K-hook, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, that's just appropriate that it has a Christmas thing on it. This is as far as I've gotten so far. I just started it the other day. It's basically like a 12-point star blanket. It's just you don't connect it so that you can get it around, you know, the pole. But, yeah, so I'm using Red Heart, Super Saver, Cherry Red, White, and Spring Green. <laughs> so I think it's going to be real pretty. But I'm just going to alternate. Um, I think I'm doing... I did two rows of white, and I think I'm going to do four red, two white, four green, two white. Just keep going like that. And yeah. I'm going to make it bigger. I'm going to try to. I hope I have enough yarn to make it big enough to fit under our tree. Because our tree is ginormous. But yeah, I don't have any acquisitions other than I did get some Happy Mail. Let me get it laid out make sure there's no addresses on it. Okay, I don't think so. Alright, so this was sent to me randomly. I have a post office box, and on when you have a post office box, you can have um, 
you can have an account on the USPS website to where you can track your mail and all that and see what's in your post office box. It like sends you pictures of stuff. And when you get a package sent to you, it shows you that someone sent something, but it doesn't say who they are, but it does say where they're from. So, um, I did get a package notification or whatever from New York and I, I didn't know what it was. I was like, what did I order from New York? And it turned out to be uh, like a random gift from someone. And it's from Camille and she said, AKA Dolly Face Knits on YouTube. And I am subscribed to her, so I will link her below anyways. Um, she's pretty new. And she sent me a really nice note and all that. But she basically, she also sent me some tea. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but it's vanilla bean. Yeah, macaron. She sent me, she watched some of my videos where I talk all the time, because I talk all the time. But she said that she, um, she heard, you know, she knows that I like writing snow mail. And she does too, so she sent me some stationery. But first she sent me, I wanted to show this card. <laughs> I mean, envelope. This is what the card was in. This isn't the one that, you know, came in the mail. It was in the package in the mail. But, um, you can already tell by her use of stickers and washi tape that she's a paper crafter. <laughs> because, um, you know, that's what we do. We use stickers on paper, or washi tape on everything. But then she sent me this really pretty stationery kit. And it's white, but it's pretty. It kind of looks almost watercolory at the bottom and it's got some shimmers and it comes with envelopes and it's from a company called Peter Popper Press which is kind of cool <laughs> but yeah so I'm excited about using this and I'll probably write her letter on it just to send back to her because yeah but I actually really needed stationery and um, I'm always running out of cute papers and cards to send people so it's always cool to have these so I do appreciate that a lot and I can't wait to use it to send happy mail but yeah I wanted to share that with you and the card she sent which is this one Says you pretty much rock. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, let me put my pattern back in here so I don't lose it. Let's see. Yeah, that's all my acquisitions. I'm actually on a huge yarn band, <laughs> even bigger one than before because of Jesse's hospital bills. Uh, from where he broke his arm, his hospital bills have been crazy. We have insurance and we met our deductible because of his, <laughs> his bills, but uh, we still have over $4,000. That I have to pay out of pocket over a broken arm, which is ridiculous to me. That seems like so much money to fix a broken arm. But it's got to get done, I guess. And it could have been more. Because if he had broke his arm worse, it would have required surgery and pins and all that stuff. But yeah, so the last little bit that I have to talk about is Etsy. <laughs> uh, recently on my Facebook group, I posted about Etsy because um, they've changed their policies to where I think starting the end of July, your shop, you basically have to ship everything free over $35 if you want to get featured in the, sh the shop searches. And there's a lot of controversy about it because it's, it's basically a scam. <laughs> They're trying to scam people. And um, it's hard to explain, so I, I would suggest you look it up on YouTube there because there's lots of videos explaining it better than I could. But uh, I really want to leave Etsy and make my own shop but right now that's just not possible because one of all the extra hospital bills we're getting uh, over Jesse's arm uh, we have to focus you know I can't be buying craft supplies a much and you know we can't be spending frivolous money and I can't buy uh, a domain name and all that and do website stuff right now I won't be able to do that probably until next year until after we get all these extra hospital bills paid off so, uh, I did update my Etsy shop. There are some crab bags in there right now if you guys are interested. I should have got those to show. Wait, they're right here. But what I was trying to say about Etsy is, even though I really do not agree with the whole ship-free $35 thing, um, I'm going to have to stay on Etsy. Because <laughs> I have to stay, I have to keep selling my bags in order to pay off hospital bills <laughs> in order to get a website, if that makes sense. So, um... Nothing in my shop is ever over $35 unless you buy more than one bag at a time. Um, so, if someone does that, I'll just, I'll pay the shipping myself. It's fine. Uh, it'll take my profit down a little bit, but it's not going to, like, hit me hard and uh, be horrible. But um, I'm definitely, I do want to come out and say that I'm not going to raise any of my prices. <laughs> because that's one thing that they actually suggested people do to make up for losing shipping is to raise your prices which is like illegal <laughs> you can't like run a sale and then up your prices um to make a profit because that's illegal look that up that's illegal you can't do that uh 
but um at least not in the United States I don't know about other countries but um yeah so I'm going to continue to leave my Etsy shop open the rest of this year and then as soon as I can afford to get my own website set up um with my own shop and all that on there and get all the pay stuff figured out because I don't know how you know I don't I've never had a shop that was Etsy so I don't know if you use PayPal or what to, to um do interactions with and all that so uh I have to figure all that stuff out. But and what I was trying to say is I can't do that until probably next year because uh, we have all these hospital bills that we got to pay off. And so I am going to continue with the Etsy shop as normal. And I'm just, if, if you get, if you order something that gets you into that bracket of free shipping, it'll be free for you guys. And I won't add any of the extra fees because they suggested added like hidden fees and uh, upping your prices and stuff to make up for that and that's just really dirty to me that's dirty business <laughs> business and I don't want to deal with that at all that's that's horrible so um, if you do order anything over $35 the shipping will just come out of my pocket which is fine because you know if you order over $35 um, I've had some people order five or six bags at once and I was able to get them in one container and ship them for like under 20 bucks so that's not a huge horrible hit I know that that would be horrible if I was a, an artist who painted and I had to ship giant paintings that cost $100 to ship and I had to ship that out of pocket. That would be horrible. That would take a huge cut. But because I am a smaller shop who sells smaller things, I don't think it'll hurt me as bad as it would all those people who sell big items that weigh a lot and cost a lot to ship, especially, um, I think they're only wanting you to do it to U.S. buyers uh, because they're competing with like Amazon and all that free shipping. It's just a bunch of hoo-ha. But um, I didn't want to just come on here, whoops, I just scooted the rug, <laughs> and say that because I did say on my Facebook group that I would be closing my shop soon. But um, it's because we need the more money, more income coming in, I have to keep my shop open um, because I can't really afford to pay off our bills and just spend money on a website because it actually costs a lot of money to host a good website that comes with all the features that I would want and need <laughs> for... Um, no kitchen name because I used to make websites from scratch like uh, using CSS and HTML or whatever <laughs> and uh, but that was years and years ago I was a teenager and I could design a website from you know it would be a blank web page and I could design it from scratch but that's been so many years ago I don't know if I can remember any of the coding and all that and I don't really want to try to learn it again but anyways with that being said there are some crab bags in the shop and I will be having some project bags the first week of August, almost said October, of August. So I'll show you the crab bags real quick. Crab bags, they get their name because of Devin and me. They're actually called um, snap closure bags. <laughs> they are made with little metal hardwares that you squeeze and they open, and then when you like, when you not squeeze them, they close. <laughs> and these are hook case sizes. I have made them smaller for notion pouches and I actually have some cut in there But I ran out of the hardware. I have to order some more um, Of this size because this is the size that I like the most But they're really cool bags, you know, and some people use them for sunglasses You can use them for anything really. I just market them as hook bags because hooks do fit in here With uh, room to spare some scissors fit in here. It depends on how you know big they are uh, pretty much, you know, you can throw anything in here, crochet-wise or knit-wise, except, you know, big knitting, knitting needles. And um, sunglasses, eyeglasses fit in there, all kinds of stuff. I actually had one girl local to me order some to put her, um, she ordered slightly bigger ones that were like this wide. She puts her glasses and keys and stuff in it for uh, when she goes to the gym. I mean, I have to fix this one. I just realized the seam is not good on that one. I have to fix this back. <laughs> this one's in the shop, but I gotta go move it because it doesn't need to be sold right now. But this one's in the shop. It's, um, these are all scrap materials that I've had from previous bags. It's white on the inside. There is another tie-dye one. Someone ordered one. This one's slightly shorter, but it's still the size that a hook will fit in. What color is that? I can't even see that. I think it's orange. <laughs> the lighting's coming from back there, so I can't see good. There's two space-themed ones planets and I think they're what are they black that one's green on the inside green they're both green <laughs> and then I got two sugar skull bags they are green and black <laughs> okay it's in there a panda bag and it is black on the inside and then I got three of the teapots I had a lot of scraps of the teapot print 
that one's orange that one is black and this one is a gray color but yeah so these are the ones that are currently in the shop i gotta go take that one down i could have sworn i inspected every one of these i usually i do like my own quality inspection i like grab the seams and pull them apart <laughs> and uh this bag right here seam is coming off so i gotta open it back up and fix it that's an easy fix though so that one will be on the shop soon <laughs> i can't believe i missed that though that makes me feel bad i'm always worried that i'm gonna miss something like that and someone's gonna actually get it and it's gonna mess up and if that ever happens to anyone if you ever order anything from me and it messes up just let me know and i will fix it <laughs> I actually I actually fixed some bags for a woman who ordered. She orders for me all the time. Uh, I won't say her name because she may not want me to say her name. But um, she her dogs got into some of her bags and chewed up the zippers on them. And she asked me if I could fix them. And I did. She sent them to me and I fixed them and sent them back to her. So I will gladly fix my products if something comes to you damaged. Or if your dog chews on it. <laughs> if it's fixable, I will fix it. Now I'm going to check every one of my bags to make sure that the seams are good. So I me paranoid. I just mailed a, whole, mailed a whole bunch of these the other day. I hope none of them were like that. But, um, yeah, that one's good. Last one. I also got some material here that I'm going to show you guys. I bought this earlier this week. What is today? Today's Wednesday. Monday. I bought it Monday. I just went to Hobby Lobby. I have some yardage that of solid colors for liners, so I just went and bought material that would go with those so that I wouldn't have to buy a whole bunch of material. I just bought the, the, um, what is it called? The decorative outside parts and then zippers. And I got so lucky on zippers at Hobby Lobby at my Hobby Lobby. All their zippers were on clearance. I guess they're getting some new brands in or something. Normally I buy, um, dollar zippers and then I never buy them from Hobby Lobby because they were like two or three dollars each, but they were all 49 cents each. So I bought, and if I had had extra money in my no catching name budget, I would have bought every one of those zippers. But I bought just the amount that I needed, which was for these bags and the uh, Mal, the Christmas and July Mal winners bags. But anyways, I bought this one. I, th I think it's floral, but it also looks kind of fireworky. I don't know, <laughs> but I just thought it was real pretty. Pinks and purples. I bought this one. This looks really um, southwestern. <laughs> Is that the right word? I thought it was really pretty. This one I thought was cute. Someone else had bags made out of this the other day. I can't remember who it was. But I just thought it was super cute. Little bugs. And then coffee beans. Because <laughs> I have a yard of brown that I wanted to use up. And coffee beans are brown. Lots of people like coffee. This beautiful floral. I love stuff like this. I think those are roses. And then I found another llama print. Oh, this is probably alpacas. Let me look at their ears. I don't know. I, I always forget how to tell them apart. This has got a bunch of cool looking alpacas on it. So yeah, those are going to be bags in the shop soon. Maybe some other random ones because I do have a bunch of random material that I need to just start using up. And um, I got to work on some Christmas bags for the Mal winners uh, next week. And then I got to draw a winner for the Knit Crate video. That's not until the 5th of August. Right? Yeah. But yeah, so that's Etsy stuff, all that mumbo jumbo. I'm so annoyed with like social media right now. I feel like everything's just changing their policies and it's making everything harder. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I guess that's everything. I gotta get off here and do some laundry and get stuff ready for dinner. I think I'll make some chicken wings for dinner tonight. But I will see you guys in the next video, I guess. Bye, guys. Hey,